Taijiang National Park sits along the westernmost point of Taiwan Island. Thousands of years ago, once part of a vast prehistoric inner sea, the area is now carpeted in sandbars and wetlands. This extensive wetland and its oyster farms, fish ponds, and salt fields are the sweet fruit of over four centuries of arduously hard work. In the tumult of nature, change and adaptation shape the relationship between the land and all living creatures. Taijiang encapsulates perfectly this abiding law of nature. Several thousand years ago, Sandbars dominated the ancient inner sea that lay just west of Tainan. Archaeological evidence shows that about four to five thousand years ago, groups of people chose to stay here as hunter-gatherers around this ancient inner sea. By the 17th century, the area's favorable topography promoted its development and made Taiwan a key hub of contemporary global trade. It was around this time that the name Taijiang Inner Sea first appeared in books. Word of the area spread far and wide. This offshore outpost of opportunity was particularly attractive to mainland Chinese. Many ultimately chose to risk everything to travel by boat across the Penghu Channel in order to reach Taijiang Inner Sea. Because of its dark, deep waters, the Penghu Channel was called the Black Trench. Its notorious unpredictability sent countless ships to their doom. A contemporary adage, of ten six die, three stay and one returns underscores the fact that those brave immigrants were risking everything for a new life on Taiwan. Tainan Naval Garrison Commander Yao Ying wrote in his brief account of a voyage to the east of a terrible rainstorm in the Taijiang Inner Sea in 1823. In July of 1823, a rainstorm of tremendous strength raised the seas greatly with sand at Luerman turning the water into dry land. This multi-day inundation altered the course of the Zhengwen River and sent sediment from the mountains plunging downstream and piling up along the Taijiang shoreline, gradually raising the inner sea above water. Further torrential storms over the subsequent century finally closed the Inland Sea's outlet on the Taiwan Strait. This powerful display of nature's might had created new land for even more immigrants. However, the high salinity of Taijiang soils favored aquaculture over agriculture. Settlers cordoned off fish ponds in the sedimentary tidal flats, creating in the process a major new industry. Chigo Lagoon, Taiwan's largest modern lagoon, is the largest reminder of Taijiang's ancient inner sea. It's also a hotspot of ecological diversity and of modern aquaculture.
The Black Trench that brought Chinese settlers to Taijiang is still a main route for ferry traffic between Penghu and Tainan, and a productive fishing ground for Penghu and Taijiang fishermen. At the confluence of multiple sea currents, the Black Trench is rich in fish and other sea resources. The regular sunshine and strong winds on the Taijiang Tidal Flats encouraged military advisor Chen Yonghua during the late 17th century to order the construction and improve the procedure of sea-fed salt evaporation fields. A significant expansion of Taijiang salt production during the Japanese colonial period launched the golden age of Taiwan's salt industry. Competition from cheaper sources of salt led to the shuttering of the last active salt fields in May 2002. Conservation efforts have saved a number of salt evaporation fields, workers' dormitories, and salt transportation canals, which serve as the pillars of DIY activities that remind us today of our salt industry culture and heritage. Over the past four centuries of political and economic change, Taijiang has remained a key cultural crossroads. Military and commercial heritage sites, aquaculture and salt industry facilities, and religious centers for the worship of Wangye, Dadaogong, and Mazu are all woven into the daily life of Taijiang. Abandoned salt evaporation fields and derelict aquaculture ponds have become fonts of ecological renewal as important habitats for over 370 avian species and other animals and revived the international wetlands in the Zhengwen Estuary and Sicao, as well as the national wetlands in Qigu and the Yanshui Estuary. Taijiang goes through several changes of wardrobe in tune with the changing seasons. Autumn breezes draw flocks of visitors to Taiwan across thousands of kilometers of ocean. The black-faced spoonbill is a globally endangered avian species. Each year, more than 60% of the world's population of these birds touch down at Taijiang and other nearby wetlands to pat the winter. While no one can say for sure, it's been reasonably speculated that the spoonbill's choice to winter in Taijiang may be related to the area's aqua farms. Milkfish is the oldest and largest aquaculture sector in Taijiang, with a history that stretches back four centuries. After milkfish are harvested in the autumn and before new fry are set out in spring, Taijiang's milkfish ponds are left to dry out in the sun. 
The leftover small fish and shrimp in these ponds are an important source of food for the black-faced spoonbills. When feeding, spoonbills wave their long beak from side to side in the water in order to lap in the small fish and shrimp. This odd-looking feeding habit gives this bird its Taiwanese nickname, La Bui, which means the scoop. As winter ends and northern winds wane, adult black-faced spoonbills start growing golden breeding plumage on their chest and back of the head. Having eaten their winter fill in Taijiang, they are now ready to depart for northern breeding grounds. Warm breezes banish winter's chilly winds. March is here and ready to greet the spring. China berry trees burst into bloom and life on the tidal flats prepares for the onset of breeding season. Taijung pulsates with springtime verve. Wetlands are recognized as one of the world's most productive ecosystems and as critical habitats for birds and other organisms. Mangrove trees are considered as indicator species of wetland ecological health. Taijiang has the largest concentration of mangroves in Taiwan, with black mangrove, four-petaled mangrove, and Lumnitsera among the most common species here. All are native to Taiwan. Mangrove roots help filter and clean water, and branches easily decompose, creating a food source for water animals. Plentiful food resources support in coastal Taijiang more than 70 different species of crab and over 60 species of snails and shellfish. This abundance also makes Taijiang ideal for a kaleidoscopic array of insects.
As spring hands over the Bataan to summer, lalong grasses are in full bloom, swaying to and fro in the balmy sunshine. As farmers prepare their fields, cattle egrets are happy to take advantage of the chance for a free meal. At this time of the year, local birds and summer migratory guests create a melodic chorus of calls that is the familiar score of Taijiang summers. Black-winged stilts are common in Taiwan year-round, with some staying only for the winter and others staying all year round. Mated stilt pairs build nests in fish ponds and abandoned salt fields to cradle their progeny into the world. Rose-colored late afternoon skies signal a temporary respite from daytime heat. Summer nights along Taijiang buzz with activity as well. The ground beneath Taijiang's windbreak forests tremble imperceptibly. Endemic Taiwan twilight cicada, or Beipu cicadas, are ready to welcome new lives into the world tonight. While eclosion brings to a close the final transformative stage, it is also a time of extreme vulnerability to hungry predators. Those who survive the night wait for their wings to stiffen and to welcome the chorus of tweets that will greet the new morning. It is now known that Taijiang is an important habitat for Taiwan twilight cicada with the largest population.
Taijiang National Park was founded in 2009 to conserve and protect the area's rich natural, cultural, and commercial heritages. Taijiang National Park spans Tainan cities, Annan, and Chigu districts, covering a land and water area of 40,000 hectares. Integrated conservation and environmental education efforts have revitalized this vital coastal area through a cooperative effort between the park and local residents. This ever-changing, ever-growing coastal wetland is constantly being renewed and revitalized to ensure its health for generations to come. Ancient Taijiang Inner Sea once spanned 150,000 hectares. Today, only 1,000 hectares remain in Chigu Lagoon and Sutsao Lake, a massive change in topography. The constants of this land are its sandbars, lagoons, salt fields, and fish ponds. Under the care of Taijiang citizens, this land of boundless opportunity through change and adaptation, will always be an engine propelling forward the natural and cultural development of Taijiang.